Good morning, everyone. Uh, hope somebody's there. Uh, I, I tried to call a bank, and they or is it from eight to eight? So I called eight thirty, and they said the offices are closed. So I said, "What's going on over here?" Is it's eight thirty, and they said they're open from eight to eight. This really helped me. So then it uh, dawned on me that today is Memorial Day in America. Wow, I never ever did this in my life. So, so, uh, so I, I, I appreciate you getting up on a holiday and like you're not off to uh, some park or something to that. Or maybe you are and you're just listening as you're off. Okay. Uh, so I'd like to give a little heads up for the week, Mitz Hashem. I hope that today we'll, we'll finish up what we did with Pelayoit and another piece there. Mitz Hashem, tomorrow we have uh, our tefillah. We'll continue on our uh, going through the Shemun Esrei and understanding the words of the Tefillah. And then Bezer Hashem on Wednesday, um, we'll, we'll try to do something for Shavuos. Okay. Uh, so let's just finish up over here what we had yesterday with his Orus. How crucial it is for a person to uh, inspire himself. And uh, you're the only one that can do it. You can't... Uh, depend on others. If I'm not going to do it, then uh, who else is going to do it? I'm the only one that has total control over myself. So he, here he says something a little uh, scary, but he tells us, Hisorus is only effective if the person is alive. We'll see what he means by alive in a minute. Ach what, yashenhu, what, what's, what's lacking? He's in a stupor. He's a bit, he, he's sleeping. He, he's not sensitive yet. He's alive. He's, he's hearing, but it's not, he's, he's not, he's not inspired yet. He, he needs a little push. People very often want to do certain things, but it's hard for them. And they need a little push. And with that push, he'll be able to uh, accomplish what he's looking to do. Kishima Oren also, when they tell him, look at who you are, Ben Adam. You're, you're a Tzelem Elohim. Malach Nehudim, why are you sleeping? Like the, the Napoleon used to say, he despised sleeping. He says, well, when I'm asleep, I'm not the king. When I'm awake, then I'm the king. So you tell yourself, in other words, I'm here, I'm here to be for a purpose. I'm here to accomplish. If I'm sleeping, how's that, how's that getting me? To, how's that getting me anywhere? Ha'ira, wake up. As he cuts Mishnah, so, so then he'll be able to pick himself up. And he'll, con and he'll continue doing what he understands he needs to do. So this is a person who's basically sensitive. He just, it's difficult for him. So for him, then these motivational ideas will definitely inspire him and he'll be able to carry through. However, Aval, Mishu, Mace, the person is so turned off, he's so disconnected. Lo yo lo hisaurus, then hisaurus is not going to be enough. Won't do it. Like he, like he brings on the medrash, she'ein basar hames margish be'izemel. Like the Gemara tells us that if a person has a piece of dead flesh on him, then it does, he doesn't feel the knife going through. You don't feel the scalpel. Kein adabar hazeh says, that's the same thing over here. Shemisha noga, yiras Hashem belibo, the person has Yiras Hashem, Alech Takfaso Yitzro, his Yitzhahara became so overwhelming 
the Haviru al Daito, and he kept going against his own better judgment, Valdas Kono, and he went against the teachings of the Torah. Ad Shibarov Hayamim, after a while, Nasalo Hadavar Hahu Kehurgalbo, it became second nature by him. Keheta, like the Gemara tells us, if a person does Nevera once or twice, so it becomes it becomes it's uh, it becomes mutter for him. The Gemara says it's mutter, it doesn't become mutter. He says, but since he does it, as we understand very well, no one wants to live with guilt. So then obviously he understands after a while, he, he looks at it as if it's mutter because the person doesn't want to live with, with guilt with himself all the time, knowing he's doing something wrong. So he's not going to do that. He'll justify it. Then you have the famous statement of Yitzhak Salanter. What happens if he does it a third time already? He says, then it already becomes a mitzvah. So then you already turn you turn what you did from an Aveira to something that's mutter, then you turn it into a mitzvah already. There's something you have to do. So th this is the derech of the Yetz. He tries to turn us off, to disconnect us. And so then he's saying, it's then to Hisorus is really not going to be so effective over here. So then he continues, one second. I'll does, right? Nasalo Keheter, right? And um, that you have the very famous teaching in, in the Sefer Achinoch, very beautiful idea, which is, you know, I'm sure you've, you've heard it, but it's always good to say things over again, just to remind ourselves that in, his, in the Sefer Achinoch, he wrote the Sefer, went through all the 613 mitzvahs, and he wrote the Sefer for his son, who's a, who's a bar mitzvah child. And he was trying to give him an appreciation to all the mitzvahs. So uh, he was discussing the mitzvah of not breaking the bone of a Korban Pesach. So in the middle of his discussion of the halacha there, he says, and if my son, you're going to try to ask me a question, why are there so many mitzvahs that the Torah gives us for Zechei Yitzhiyah and Shreem? Let's just do one, let's just do one mitzvah. We'll, we'll remember Yitzhiyah and that's enough. Why do I have so many, so many, so many mitzvahs trying to go over this idea of how we have to remember Mitzrayim. So the, the Sefer Achina says, he says, my son, he says, I'm going to give you an, ex an understanding to that. He says, a person is basically impacted by the things that he does. The more a person does something, it has an effect on his personality itself. He says, even if a person, for example, by nature is stingy, he's, uh, he's tight, but if he's constantly giving, and that's why the Ramam says it's always good to give smaller amounts, but to keep doing it on a regular basis, because then it has an influence, an impact on your personality, becoming a given person. If a person by nature is, can, can, uh, has, has a self-control issue, but if, you know, if they become a kindergarten teacher, they deal with little children, and they have to have patience over there to be able to... Uh, you know, to stay on the job anyway, if they want to keep their job, they're certainly going to have to be uh, kind to the children. So eventually it wears off on them and it has a very positive influence. Unfortunately, it goes the op opposite way as well. So this is the idea of if a person is going to keep doing something over and over, it's going to become part of his personality and he's going to become very, very disconnected. So he continues, so therefore, if a person will want to become inspired, if he's going to learn a sefer of Musr, or Shama Bilimudim, or hear a shear, Yesor Libo, it will it, to touch the heart, but Yachel Bekirbo, it should it penetrate into him, Yesharit Charata Gemura, and it will bring him to a point where he'll have uh, He'll regret what he did. He'll look for ways to remove himself from the, to, to heal himself. He said, but that doesn't apply to, uh, to people who have become so entrenched in their, uh, their, their negativity. They are so in, entrenched in their Averas. They're, they're, they're so blinded that anything of Yeres Hashem does not impress them, just goes off them. We, we have to appreciate when a person does, to, uh, does an Aveira, he is, he is contaminating himself. Uh, Rabbi Wan used to say a story that um, someone from the Federation, which is one of the largest uh, philanthropic organizations in America, 
like all the uh, Jewish hospitals like Mount Sinai and uh, the, the other Jewish hospitals, et cetera, and the Ys, they were, they were all funded by the Federation. And the Federation is not a, a religious organization. It, uh, it, it uh, targets, you know, conservative reform Jews, basically. And this is the way the Jews, uh, dem you know, give, uh, demonstrate their philanthropy by giving to hospitals, et cetera. So um, they once came to Rabbi Wein and they asked him, he said, hey, we don't understand something. He says, we, the monies that we collect are basically coming from 15% of the Jewish constituency. He said, what happened to the 85, what happened to the other 85% of the Jewish consistency, you know, the conservative reform movement in America, what happened to all of them? So he told them, he said, they had a heart attack. He said, what do you mean they had a heart attack? So he explained to them, he said, you have to understand something. He said, the people that used to give to the Federation were people that, who were European Jews. And even if they weren't necessarily so committed, but at least when it came to, they, they ate Jewish food. They were eating chaplivik, they were eating, they were, they were eating matzahs, they were doing these things. He said, but now, he says, their children and their grandchildren are more interested in um, more, or, more exotic types of foods. They're not, um, they're not so interested in the Jewish food so much. So he said, that's the idea. They had a heart attack. It, it clogged up their arteries, just like we have physical arteries, we have spiritual arteries. And if a person's gonna keep eating non-kosher food, it's going to uh, clog it, and it's gonna cause that the person will have no feeling anymore. Like people used to say, they're a Jew at heart. So he says, yeah, but the, the problem was that they had a heart attack and they no, they no longer feel that uh, connection to the Jewish people like their grandparents did, just move further and further away. Um, he once mentioned a, a very interesting observation, he said that there was a conservative rabbi that said in 1950, the conservative movement, the idea of conservative mind, I'm sorry, I'm digressing, but it's interesting to know. Conservative means that they try to preserve whatever they could, that was their, uh, outlook. They said, in other words, like in 1950, after the war, many Jews were moving to the suburbs. So the question is, if we move to the suburbs, so then people are going to live a mile, two miles away from a shul. So they're not going to, not going to, you know, in the middle of the winter, they're not going to do that. They're not going to go from their house. They're not going to walk in the snow and the rain and the cold to a shul two miles down the road. And they lived in New York City, so we're always close. And that's when I grew up in the Bronx, there was no, you had to walk a block and a half and you had the shul. That was it. But once you moved outside, so then um, where are you going to go? So they had to make a, uh, a decision. Do we save the Shabbos or do we save the shul? So he said they came to a decision that it was more important to save the shul than to save the Shabbos. So they let them, uh, gave them permission to, to drive to shul because we, we need to save the shul. He says now it's uh, 50 years later in the year 2000, he said, we, we came to a recognition that uh, we no longer, we, we, 50 years ago, we made a decision to save the shul and not save the Shabbos. He says, now we no longer have the shul and we no longer have the Shabbos either. They, they, they lost both. They lost both in their, uh, in their calculations. They thought they could save, but it's not true. If a Jew doesn't have Shabbos, then they, they, then they, lost, then they lost everything. And that's what happened. So he said, people like this who are so disconnected that the, the Tuma cut them off. They're so far away. The, the, con the connection to the Shechina, the Ruach HaTumah, the Tumah in them, it's surrounding them, completely engulf them. And they have so many sins, because they, they, they just do it on such a regular basis. They, they, they see nothing wrong. There's nothing for them to do tshuva on. Alanoshim Ke'ela, for people in such a, a situation, uh, Chazal tell us, that even when they're alive, they're, they're spiritually not alive. That's the, there's the famous idea that Rebbe Eliolapian brings down in, in, in the Chumash. Um, when the brothers came back and they told, they told Yaakov that Yosef is alive and he's the viceroy of Egypt. And the Chumash says that uh, Yaakov didn't believe them. So Rabbi Lapian points out, he says, what do you mean? They thought that they're playing a joke on their father. They knew, they knew their father. It was, it's not a time and place to play jokes about Yosef. So what did it mean their father didn't believe them? So he said that because they said in the same breath 
that Yosef is alive, but he's the viceroy of Egypt. When the way ya ya Yaakov understands life, it's like we're seeing over here. Tzaddikim are alive, that they're connected to Torah, they're connected to Hashem, that, that's, that these people who are alive. But if you're telling me that Yosef, who is the viceroy in Egypt, Egypt represented the most, uh, how do I want to describe it? The most Tame empire in the world at the time. It was so engrossed in Avodah Zorah and in Arias and everything which is so antithetical to Torah values. He said, how could you tell me that Yosef is alive and he's the, he's the, he's the second in command of Egypt? Egypt is a, is, a, is a society which is contrary to anything that represents Torah life. That's what Yaakov couldn't believe. So then when he showed him that, he still remembered his learning. So then he, he, he believed him that. He understood, Yo, my son is alive. And, he, and that's why uh, Yosef was able to, to save us from all this. He, he survived that, that gullus. He gave us that, that, that ability to be able to survive in such a, in her, a horrific society. You know, Yosef was wealthy and he was able to survive. And that's the, 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 Yosef is the one that is able to give us the guidance to be able to survive in a world of such, uh, in such a world. That even it's not, it's not the prime Jews can be successful and still be Torah personalities. That's all comes from Yosef. This person, unfortunately, who's so entrenched, it's not it's not that he not only will he not be inspired, even if he'll hear ideas, he'll come across it. Me peace farm. He'll see it in a safer. Me peace People speaking. It'll have no impression on him. As we say, bows and achas, like we say, it goes in one ear, in one, out the other. It just didn't make its impression. And for them, it, it's almost impossible for them to, uh, to change. It looks like tshuva has been closed. How will it be possible for them to come back? If a person understands that he's doing everything right, then, then there's nothing to change. There'll, there'll be never a situation that will, that will try to uh, inspire them to want to, to look at things differently. That they should have any regrets over what they did. The Yetzirah has made things so smooth for them. They come to a point where if they see anything, anything to do with Torah and traditional Judaism, they, they look at it in an disparaging way. And they look at Chachamim in a very negative way. And they don't accept the words of the, of the Chachamim. Like it says, Rashi quotes it, Shashiva Averos, like we learned in Parshish B'chu Kosai, at the end of Vayikra. One of error causes the next until the point where he says, not only won't he do, but he doesn't want anybody else to do it. And anybody else does mitzvahs, they look down upon them. <laughs> they want everyone to be following this, this banner, that everyone should be to join onto this banner, fighting Hashem. or <laughs> There's no light, there's no possibility. That's what it seems. Ragzos Matsono, but he comes up and is what I want us to hear the that there's no such thing as a Jew who's ever lost. And like he says over Ragzos Matsonu Takonachas, I find that there is a way to penetrate. What is it? Yeshim Yucha Locha Vesitra, if a person can overcome himself, Lil Mod, if it can just start learning, Olishmoa Bilimudim, Todir Yom Liyom, day by day. By night, even if he's doing it and he doesn't want to do it. He's not really interested. But, but that we have a promise that Torah is a source of life. And anyone who's connected to Torah, the Tal Torah, Tal Torah Mechayehu, then the Torah will bring that person back to life. Torah has the capabilities to bring someone back to life. I've seen it year after year after year with all the Talmudim. I'm sure you've seen it yourself. You've experienced it yourself, I'm sure. And when a person 
starts learning Torah, Torah has the capability to bring someone back to life. See, Viaro Kamak Tif, like it says in the Chumash, the Torah is going to be like rain that brings life to the world. Kamosha Tipo Samatar, just like we see in the famous story of Rabbi Kiva, that when the, as, the, as the drops of the rain keep going drop by drop, and it penetrates even stone. That's what Rabbi Kiva saw. That how the, it's unnoticed, but one drop dissolved even a grain of the stone. After time, after time, it definitely penetrates. And that's the uh, that's the famous idea of uh, the Kotzka Rebbe when he, when we sang Kriyat Shema. He said that these Vayod Varmeila Alev Avecha said that these words should be on your heart. We would have expected it to say Bilvavecha in your heart. What does it mean Alev Avecha? Should keep these words on your heart, meaning that sometimes a person's heart heart is hard. He's 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 angry. He's disappointed. He he doesn't he doesn't want to hear Torah. But if you just have it there, so at a certain point, there'll be an opening, it'll just go right in. Eventually, there'll be an opening, it'll go right in. So this is what's happening. Torah penetrates drop by drop. So if Shinochev is a lev, heaven will be able to penetrate this stone heart. Or Meser lev, heaven, it'll remove that stubbornness from him. Baruch Nachon Yiskadish Bikarbo, and he'll have a new spirit within him, a new life. Like Chazal tell us, Marshka, the famous Gemara in Sukkah, Marshkeo Lebeis HaMedrash. If you take the the uh, the Eight Sahara into the Beis HaMedrash, Im Even Hu, if it's a stone, Unimuach, it will penetrate it. Im Barzel Hu, if it's metal, then it'll crack open. About Tzorok, but but it's on one condition over here, which is very crucial, which is something that we we see by Sfirah Saomer. This is this idea. You need to do it on a daily basis. It can't be done uh, once in a while. It's like I once heard people uh, say, we have a statement that says, Koshos. all beginnings are difficult. And that's true. The problem is, is that most people, they begin each week. It's like in you know, a person, you know, wants to go on a diet, right? They've been incubated too long, so they need to do a diet. So, um, so they start one day, then they give up, then they start again. So you're always starting, and that's the problem. Call us chalas koshos. If you if you're constantly beginning, then it's always going to be difficult. You have to give it some sort of a routine. You have to get into it. That's what we see by Sfirah It has to be day after day after day. If you do that, even if it's a small amount, but then you're ready to be makabel Torah, because you, you did it on a daily basis. If you miss it, so then it's a disconnect, and then you have to start all over again. So if you can, if you'll do something, even if it's a small thing, and uh, you do it right, how, how long does Sri Asoma take you? It takes you 30 seconds to count, but there's something, but it's done on a daily basis. And this is the idea: if I'll do something regularly, then it will definitely make its impression on me, and then I'm ready to be makabel Torah, because I'm I'm doing it all the time, and it's 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 affecting me. But if I do it once in a while, so then again, it's going to have to start all over again. It becomes difficult again. Shkida Rabbit requires constant involvement. And after a while, you need patience. And you, uh, again, you have to believe in yourself and you have to be patient. And things don't happen overnight. It takes time. But it definitely makes the difference. You know, it's like when you're a little kid and you, you know, you're trying to, I remember when I was a little kid and they wouldn't let you on certain rides if you were too small. So I was always measuring myself by the refrigerator to see if I grew a little bit. So every day you try and, you know, see how much you, you grew, but you don't see it right away. It takes time after a while, then you see the difference. Then the true for the medicine will be there. Then he'll, he'll, he'll his, sense, his sense will come back to him. It's like um, Rabbi Tversky gave a very nice marshal. He said that uh, if a person, you know, would put his finger in the fire and, he, and we'd feel the pain, he would start crying out of joy. So why is that? Because if a person sometimes well, his nerve endings were dead, he would put his finger into the fire, wouldn't feel anything. Now that he feels the fire, he feels the pain, but he's, he's crying out of joy because now I have my sense of sensitivity back. Sometimes we became so turned off or whatever it was, we became so disconnected that we have no sensitivity anymore. So if we, if we bring in the Torah little by little, it'll bring us back our senses. It might be painful at first, but then I'll be able to, to move on from there. And I'll be able to uh, become an, a person 
from all over again. Bezer Hashem, we should be um, to this Hashorus, this inspiration over here, to bring us back and um, prepare ourselves for the Kabbalah Satora. Okay, so we finish this piece. Bezer Hashem, tomorrow, as I said, we'll uh, we'll do Tefillah Mitz Hashem. And then on Thursday, we'll do something for, I mean, so, yeah, on Thursday, we'll do something. No, on, on Wednesday, rather. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, tomorrow's Tefillah, and then the day after, we'll do something for Shavuos, Bezer Are there any questions? Okay. Shkuri, Rabbi, Rabbi, thank you so much. Okay, have an amazing day, boys, please. And Mitzvah uh, Shem, looking forward to tomorrow, then. All the best. Have a Take great you. day, everybody. Thank you very much. Okay, all the best. Take care. Hi, Mayor. What's going on, David? <laughs> oh, Rebbe, how are you? Oh, David, how are you, David? How's how are things going? I'm late, you're, then. Uh, you're off on this vacation. The original shear. It's called the OS. The original shear. Me, Mayor, oh. and Rabbi Sternberg. Oh, very nice. Or uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Don't know anymore what the what the terms are. Correct. But right. we're taking advantage yeah. of your day. You. Very nice. Good to very see good you today. Thank you, Barbara. Exactly. Okay. It's it's good. Very good. Right. right, bring back very pleasant memories, right? Correct. We're just yeah. missing brownies here. We need some brownies. I mean, my, my, we're ready to do it. You have to get Amazon to, to deliver them, whatever. Rebbe, I'll take care of that. <laughs> Mayor hasn't... Product. Give me the product. Mayor hasn't changed his, hair, his hairdo in, uh, in 18 years. Same hair <laughs> from Sheer. <Okay. laughs> okay. At least lose it. <laughs> very, very good. I have to give my share now, so thank you. Okay. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow, Rabbi. Bye. Have a good one. You too. You too. Bye.